When you want Chicago's classic hits, turn to 94.7 WLS for traffic and weather info. Tune into 890 AM WLS for traffic and weather first on the fives when you need it most. I want to remind you to go to WLSAM.com for breaking news, weather, traffic, and more. You can also download podcasts, listen live, and Check our exclusive photo and video galleries. Get it all at WSAM.com. Jake, 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 Jake. Snow cone machine. Snow cone. Uh, let's you know what the, protect you know what, the pumpkins. You know what the reason for the snow cone mach- machines were? In case of emergency and we needed to uh, put ice in the bags, we could have the snow cone machine make the ice. Do you ever hear of a damn ice maker? Listen, when you're under, when you're hiding under rubble I'm, after the terrorists I, have attacked you and shot, you know, shot up your little New Hampshire burg, the one thing you need is, can I have a snow cone? Well, snow cone is for Michigan or Michigan, whatever. The the other ones for yeah, I don't New care. Hampshire. That's I, why these politicians cannot cut. John and John and Woodstock. Good morning, John. Hey, Jake and John. How are you doing? Jake and uh, John. Hey, I got a story for you. My niece is a FEMA account manager, and during Katrina, she had authority uh, up to $100,000. So she was able to sign off on any bill up to hundred grand. She had a bill for $90,000 for chairs without a receipt. She went to her boss and said, there's no way I'm going to pay this. We don't have any receipts. They said, pay it. We got too many bills coming in. So that, that's the kind of account you, you know, account you have. You have good employees that try to point out what's happening, and you're still told to, yeah. you know, Trying to check it, go on because keep pushing it. Maybe you don't have a job. It's only money. Thank you, John. Yeah, take care. Thanks. He John. reminds me. Here's what happened, Katrina and and yeah, Sandy. Go on. Real fast. Uh, they had these these trailers that people can live in. These homes, these trailer homes. They bought them. They had them. They were used once. A lot of them weren't even used at all. They paid around twenty five grand for them. Right. <laughs> They What's sold the them tent? right this year, right before Sandy. They sold all those trailers. They sold them as salvage. We're paying the government two thousand, three thousand dollars for the trailers. Right? right here comes Sandy. Where's the federal government buying trailers again for twenty five thousand? Why don't they buy the old ones? Well, the old ones that they sold for two, three thousand, people were buying them for that amount and reselling them on the market for fifteen. They were worth fifteen. They sold them for two, and then. They, they're buying you for 25 Brownie, you're doing a heck of a job. And people don't have places to live in uh, New yeah. York where they're... Where it's and cold. that's this year's FEMA, not the FEMA from Katrina. This this year's FEMA. The clock is your friend. The clock is it your is. friend. It is. It's time for news weather traffic. Adam Kinzinger coming right up uh, right after news weather traffic right here in WS. Chicago's talk leader because of you. So help us make the WLS News Department the best in Chicago. If you witness news, call the 89 WLS News Tip Hotline at 312-236-0507. 10.37, John Cash, Jake Hartford back. Don't forget uh, the WLS box office may open yet. Uh, We have Bon Jovi tickets today. Great. Bon Jovi. I love that enthusiasm. No, no, no. I told you the other day he was in a great movie, Killing Vampires uh, with uh, Wooden Stakes. I, I'll never forget it. And one of my first uh, leg men, Court Mrs. Flynn, loved Bon Jovi. She'd have to go to every concert. We're going to have a test on this later. Joining us right now it. from Washington, D.C. is Congressman Adam Kinzinger. Good morning, Congressman. Hey, John and Jake. How are you guys? We're fine. Uh, I, I got a question for you, Congressman. All right, I got uh, an answer. Uh, what, what's your what's your thought with Senator Dement uh, jumping ship? I, yeah, I just found this out. You know, maybe fifteen minutes ago. I think it'll be pretty interesting. Um, you know, I think Heritage is probably a, a good fit for him. Uh, Heritage Foundation, and uh, you know, they've obviously been a leading conservative think tank, and uh, it'll be interesting. I mean, it makes me. This really kind of came out of, I guess, right field, not left field. It came out of right field. I didn't really see it coming, so. I think as the day goes on, it'll be interesting to see if he just, you know, like literally had a passion just to go run, the, you know, Heritage or if there was anything else behind it. I doubt there was anything else behind it. But well, how about this one? Surprise. How about this one? He wasn't really in favor of tax increases and defense contractors in South Carolina want their money. How's that? Well, well that sounds... Uh, Sorry to be a political reporter. 
What? We can throw it out there. We can throw that out yeah. there as a possibility. Well, we had Senator Tom Coburn on about a half hour ago, and he said that uh, Senator DeMint was frustrated and that he came to Washington to, you know, try to get some fiscal responsibility, and it's not happening, and he just kind of gave up. Well, you know, that that could be it. I mean, look, it's been, it's been very frustrating for us in Washington. I mean, you know, we know that the long-term driver of our debt are, are entitlement programs, but nobody really wants to do anything about it. We can see it in this fiscal cliff negotiations where Republicans have come forward and said, you know, hey, we're willing to put revenue on the table. I mean, that's, look, that's an anathema of Republicans. Everybody understands it. But we also realize we need to get to a... Uh, uh, to a, a bargain solution here that really is going to make a difference. The president has yet to come forward on real spending cuts, and you know this is—it's getting frustrating. But you know, it really has got to redouble our efforts to fight for these long-term spending cuts. But why do you put yourself in the position as Republicans of breaking ranks and then looking like you're going to let Obama come in and be the big savior of the ta- uh, be the tax cutter? I mean, how can well, you be doing? How do you, how do you guys do this? Well, I'm not sure I quite understand your premise. I mean, I'll tell you what's happening now. The, the, we've put revenue on the table because we've come out and said, all right, we understand we didn't win the presidential race. It's, uh, you know, you did, so you got a seat at the table. But we also have a seat at the table. Here's what we want. What we want is long-term entitlement reforms, and he is refusing to come forward with those. So I don't know if there's this idea that, you know, somehow we're not going to fight for this in the long run. I mean, this is exactly what we're fighting for. But, you know, putting revenue on the table, I think, is a... I mean, the idea that we're going to get 100% of what we want when we lost the presidential race in a year we should have won it, I think is unrealistic. Uh, one of the things the president points to are polls that show that, you know, majority of the people want... Uh, to tax the wealthy, uh, you know, we've got to increase the taxes for them. I'm reading a story this morning about uh, t- uh, a poll that just came out where it says 39% of people are aware of the Simpson uh, Bowles uh, plan, and I think it's uh, eight, uh, what is it, uh, 23% support that, and then there's another 20 some percent of people are aware of the Panetta Burns plan, and that only gets about 8% of the support. Does that surprise you? Yeah. No, not really, because I don't think people have really taken deep looks into these comprehensive plans. They like the idea of the comprehensive plan. But, you know, my guess is the vast majority of Americans haven't sat down and read Simpson Bowles. I am kind of I kind of like something called Cooper Lotterette, which is a bit of a modified version of Simpson Bowles. But, you know, I think it's going to take something big like this, because the point is, is we can't keep kind of going down this one or two month increments. We can't keep taking it to the precipice. But... Let's be very clear about something here. Tax increases do nothing to solve the deficit. This is just a matter of saying, fine, Mr. President, as far as revenue, because you campaigned on it, we're using this to try to get to the table with you on the things that really matter, which is entitlement spending. He has not done that. We do not have a revenue problem in this country. We have a real spending problem in this country. And, you know, we've got both this situation, the, the, the Fiscal cliff is really two different issues. All right, I, I give you I give you permission to go over the cliff, okay? Well, and you just know do what? It. Let's see this. I'll tell you this: you go over the cliff, you're going to do two bad things. And I'm not going to just capitulate on stuff, but you raise taxes on everybody, by the way. Uh, and you and cut it. Secondly, ten percent across the board cuts on defense, not just a cut to the yeah. to say find it. It's a cut on every line item. Right. It's a cut on. Because Republicans can't seem to figure out that they have to cut. If you're going to tell people to cut on one end, domestic side, you got to cut on the other end. Well, and you, you would, know that. And, then of course and you know you we're both for defense. What? And, of course, you understand then that last year we uh, cut $500 billion from the Defense Department. And you also understand that we, as you have growing um, costs of personnel, as you hold the top line the same, you are actually shrinking down pretty significant, significantly. The amount you can invest in the future. So we I agree with you. There needs to be some cuts, and we voted for them last year. Hey, can I ask you a completely frivolous question? Absolutely. What's I'm going on that. with uh, TMZ, that popular <laughs> syndicated show, naming you a top male hottie <laughs> in Congress? Well, you know, they always say it's that. It uh, freaked me out because I thought that you told me that you promised me, it was it on this show or maybe when we were just talking, that you would never bear your abdomen. I right? never have. Right. I oh, never you're have. not the one who bared, you don't, you never bared your abdomen, right? Not no. for p- photographs. No. I don't think no. anybody could be elected in Illinois <laughs> who would do that. But as far as you're concerned, what about the hottie thing? You know, it's I'll almost you bad what, enough as showing your abdomen, I think. Well, I'll tell you the old saying in Washington is, uh, 
what is it? Washington D.C. is like Hollywood for ugly people. So if you really look at the, uh, you know, the the group of people that I'm trying to compete in, uh, which I guess uh, TMZ just happened to make the competition exist, uh, it's not really a huge accomplishment. All right, thank you, <laughs> Congressman. Good. Take care. See you, man. See you, Bye bye. Congressman Adam Kinzinger and I did a bad thing. 10:44. Back after this. 89 W L L. The 89.